Hey everybody, it's David Caroline with you, and um, here today we're going to be doing a video um, working on this oddball little thing. Uh, but uh, what we're going to be doing is going to be replacing the nut on this, which is the same process for a guitar or banjo or any kind of instrument. Um, this is a electric baritone ukulele. Yes, that's what it is. And the customer wanted a little bit uh, narrower string spacing. Um, I can't make the neck thinner without, you know, really doing some major work, but he just wants the strings a little bit closer together. So we're going to pop this nut off and make a new nut with the spacing that he wants. And I have a measurements of one that he likes of what he wants it to be. And you could easily fill these slots in and recut them. It would be the easier way to do it, but the nicer looking way to do it would be to actually just replace this nut. So that's something I do a lot of is replacing nuts either for because it's broke or because it was upgrade from a plastic one to a bone nut or you know you have to take the nut off and you do a refret sometimes and, and well, all the time really and stuff like that so this is something i do a lot of so i figured this is a good opportunity to show you how that's done all right you can see we got the strings off we got a clamping device here and now we got to heat this nut to get it off and i like to Heat up to about 250 degrees, give or take, when I'm do this. We got a little ways to go. But um, I know that this nut was glued on with tight bond because the customer actually asked the, the guy that built this, this is a handmade instrument, uh, how it was attached. I would prefer high glues, what I typically use. Fish glue is also frequently used because it does melt a little bit easier, but high glue will melt, I mean, tight bond will melt. With heat it just takes a little more patience and what you don't want is a ton of super glue i've had problems with that before actually if you watch my video on the neck reset i mean on a refret i had a martin d28 with a nut that was super glued on i had to break it to get it loose yeah it's fluctuating but 240 something right there so I think we're good I'm just gonna sit this on here for about three minutes it may take a little longer since it's tight bond and the heat will just radiate out of this block which I've been heating on the heat pad here the hot plate and that will melt the glue or soften it a little bit then we can take a hammer and a, a punch and we can tap it and knock this loose so I typically prefer to use high glue for this because I know that it melts at a fairly low temperature. It's really easy to get off, but it's very strong. But the nut doesn't really have to be all that strong because string tension pushes it down and really holds it in place. It just needs a little bit to hold it on there so that it doesn't come loose when you take the strings off. So we're just gonna let this sit here for a few minutes, then we're gonna try to tap it. It may have to heat it a couple times because it is tight bond and it takes a little bit more heat. But hopefully he didn't use too much glue. Okay. Well, let's check on this. See if this will go ahead and come off nicely. We'll start gentle. We'll start with a nylon punch. Yep, that worked. Yeah, just use a drop of glue on either side. That's good. Okay, now we can go to making a new nut. Okay, while we have this glue still a little bit soft, we'll go ahead and uh, get rid of some of the excess glue that's here. There's not a whole lot. Like I said, a nut doesn't need a whole lot of glue on it. It just holds it in place and there's no strings on there. But if we want our glue to adhere, we need a good clean surface. So we'll just take a very sharp chisel lightly get that glue off of there. There's very little. It's more or less just a drop at each end of it and a little bit on the end of the fretboard. Makes it easy. Okay. Okay, now we've got the old nut off. We'll start making our new one. See, here's our original nut. The bottom of this is radius, but the slot that it fits into is not, so I'm just gonna keep it flat. 
I don't know why he did that, but we just want to keep it flat so it has a good surface to glue to. That's probably why it's so easy to get off. But uh, we've traced this onto a blank piece of bone, if you can see that right there. This is just cow bone, a nice square block. And we'll first cut it to length, then we'll take it outside the disc sander and the belt sander to take off the bulk of the material. Roughly the length to give myself a little bit extra. Take off with a bit of the disc sander. Okay, we have a fairly roughed out shape, almost the right thickness. You can compare it to the original. Just throw some glue on it, but it doesn't quite fit down in there. It's just a little bit too thick. So you get that last little perfect fit. I like to do this with just a block of wood with some 100 grit sandpaper on it and just do it by hand. We get a perfect fit. If I do it all on the belt sander, it tends to tend to kind of miss it and you end up with a gap around it and that just don't look good. I want it to fit tight. Now I'll do the same thing uh, fitting a saddle on the acoustic guitar as well. We'll stop every now and then and check it. You can see that's perfect. It slides in and out easily, but we don't see any gaps around it. If it's a nice tight fit. Now we just got to get perfect because I want, I want to hang it over on the edges any, so we got to get these sides down perfect. I'll show you do that in here in just a second. So we got this where it, it slides in and out easily, but with no gaps around it. Now we got to get these sides flush. Now, if I was building an instrument, I would just glue this in and then sand it down, flush along with it. But we already got finish on this thing. I'm not refinishing this thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to position it in there, hold it in tight with my finger. I'm going to take a razor blade and we'll just score a line in the bone along the edge. We'll come around on the sides as well.
Okay, I'm gonna kind of do the other side. I'm kind of holding it a little closer to flush on this side. So it probably won't be as much, but. Okay. And my hand's kind of in the way, but I can go the way around it. Now what we do, you can mark that with a pencil along that line that I scored. And then we erase it and the lead will stay down in that line that I scored but come off if it were else. Giving me a very clear defined line that I can take it down to Kind of hard to see on the camera. You see a little bit there. And we'll do this by hand with the file, with needle files, get this perfect. I'm going to I'm going to take this right down to the line that I scribed earlier. I know it will be perfectly flush. You won't feel no sharp edge when you're playing. So now we're ready to rough in our slots for the strings to go through. And I've marked already the two outside strings based on the width that he wanted for this thing. And we'll use our string spacing rule that, to gauge where the other two are gonna be. They're slightly staggered. They'll be closer toward the treble side, a little bit further apart toward the bass side so that the wider strings have room for you to get your fingers in between them. They wanted about 10 millimeters of space in between each string. So we kind of averaged that out here. And found the right width to get that using this gauge. Okay, so we've got our, our four slots marked. And we just kind of rough it in with these fret slotting files. Fret slotting, these nut slotting files, which are gauged to the approximate thickness of the strings that he's going to be using. We'll start with the 13 here. I'm not going to go all the way down. We'll go all the way down once we get the thing set up. We're just going to get close. Let's get it marked and save us some time. All right, now, one more thing I gotta do before we can leave this thing on. Now I got this thing fitted. I'm just gonna take it, hit it lightly on the buffing wheel just to make it look shiny and pretty like it's always been there. All right, now we got that polished up. It looks nice. It's ready to go. I'm just gonna glue it in place. Just gonna put a couple drops of high glue. The truss rod is actually exposed right here, and I don't want to get glue on that. So we're not gonna try. We're gonna try not to get anything right there. I'm just gonna put just a tiny dab on either side, 
And I prefer liquid high glue for this because I know I can melt it later. If I need to, to get it off. I'm gonna put just a little bit on this face facing the fretboard so it glues to that as well. I said, don't take much. String tension really holds it in place pretty well. We're just going to carefully set that in place. We have wet rag to wipe off the excess because I glue before it cures, dissolves in water. This is why I like the high glue. It's easy to deal with. Even strong is a very traditional glue for luthier work as well. I'm just gonna put one clamp on here. You gotta go crazy with it. Make sure we're still flush when I position right. Centered, tighten our clamp down. And this is not something you have to really torque down crazy because it's really just string tension is going to help hold it. It's not help fighting against string tension to stay in place. A wet rag. Get any more glue that might have oozed out as I tighten that clamp. And we'll let that set for a couple of hours. It doesn't have to fully cure. High glue has a, liquid high glue has a very long curing time. It takes as much as a week to fully cure. But it just needs to be dry enough to hold it in place as we're putting strings on it because string tension will hold it down. So let this sit for a few hours and we'll come back and we'll go ahead and put strings on it and uh, get it set up. I also have to he wants it narrower with the bridge as well, so I gotta cut that. That's a whole different thing. All right, so we got our new nuts glued in place. We also uh, changed the spacing at the saddle too, but that's a whole different thing. So I didn't video that. Um, now we gotta get this down to our final action here. Uh, I just kind of roughed these in before I, I glued it. So these, these slots are nowhere near deep enough, so we're gonna have to take these down to our final height at the nut. Uh, there's not exactly standard specs for a electric ukulele so we're just going to kind of go with kind of a rough height where your typical electric guitar would be so we're going to go between 15 and 20 thousandths at the nut which is not a, a super low action but it's that's pretty typical and that, that should be good for this we use our our gauged nut slotting file just as we did when we roughed it in let's go one at a time we'll loosen the string up just enough I can get it out of the slot. Kind of set it to the side. And we'll just deepen it until we're where we want it to be. And I want it to be, like I said, between 15 to 20 thousandths. And basically it'll almost be, the file will almost be on top of the fret. So we got a, a good ways to go. I'm gonna angle it back slightly. And I'm doing.
probably let that go, but I'm gonna go a little bit. Almost there. Yeah, that's probably pretty good there. And uh, so we'll just repeat the same process for the other three strings. And uh, do the final setup and this thing will be ready to go. All right, as you can see here, we got this crazy little thing ready to go. Have our new nut in place. String height nice and low, hit the nut and all the way down. We also uh, change the spacing here, but I didn't really show that. Uh, and this thing's ready to go. Same process I would do for replacing a nut on a guitar, banjo, mandolin, anything. I just thought it was kind of neat to show it on something a little bit different here. And uh, hope y'all enjoyed that. If you did, just like, subscribe, whatever, depending on where you're watching it. So you don't miss whatever next crazy little thing I get to work on. I'm David, this is Caroline Luthier, and uh, we'll see you around.